Oh! Hey, Tony, how you doing? I'm good. Good? You usually tell me you're doing great. Today I got a lot of stuff on my mind, so today I'm just doing good. I know how to cheer you up. I'll tell you the world's greatest knock-knock joke. Okay. Knock-knock. Who's there? Oh no, I forgot how this joke ends. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, I forgot how this joke ends. Uh, I'm sorry, who? No, no really, I, I did forget the joke. I don't remember how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> we are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Mike, and this is how we learn to give God glory with what we care about. Edison, did I let you borrow my rubber chicken? Nope. Didn't you need it for some party or formal event? That definitely wasn't me. Huh. Where is my rubber chicken? Beat me. Hey, guys, check out this postcard we just got from Pete. It says, Dear Connect HQ, I want to make the world a better place. How do I do that? Signed, Pete. That is a big question. I think most of us want to make the world a better place. That's such a broad question. Hmm. But I'm sure we can solve it. Um, I'll, I'll do a search in the Bible Archives for a story that can help us out. Um, uh, how about this one? How about Solomon? Ooh, that's a great idea, Edison. This is the story. is alive. Solomon was the son of King David and had grown to become a great king himself. Solomon was a very wise king and he did many great things. But the greatest work of Solomon's reign was the building of the house of God, which was called the temple. Solomon planned very carefully. That's because building the temple was very important work. It mattered a lot to Solomon. That's because his father, King David, had wanted to build the temple and had prepared for it by gathering lots of gold, silver, stone, and cedar. Solomon knew how much the temple mattered to his dad. He knew how much it mattered to God. So building the temple mattered to Solomon very much. He took great care to make sure everything was just right. The temple stood on Mount Moriah, which is the exact place where Abraham took his son Isaac to be sacrificed the place where Solomon's father David had built an altar and the Lord appeared to him. This was a very important place designed for a very important task, building God's house. Cedar for the roof was brought from faraway lands and all the stones for the building of the temple were chiseled and shaped and fitted together before they were brought to Mount Moriah. And all the beams for the roof and the pillars of cedar were carved and made to join each other. This was so that as the walls arose, no sounds of hammers or chisels were heard. God's house was built quietly. Because building God's temple so that people could worship was so important to Solomon, he used the finest materials to build it. The walls were covered with pure gold. He decorated it with precious gems. Nothing was too good for God's house. It took King Solomon and his men seven years to build the temple, but at last it was finished. When it was done, 
Solomon brought all the things his dad, King David, had gathered for the temple, the gold, silver, and other important items. Then he had the Ark of the Covenant brought to the temple where it would sit in a place of honor, in the house of God. Finally, Solomon held a great service to let the people know the temple was ready. Solomon's greatest work was complete. He cared about the house of God. He cared about worship. So God used Solomon to build his temple where people could worship the one true God. See, Solomon made the world better by building a place for people to go and worship God. Not just any place, a temple. And he cared so much that he used the finest materials and made sure the temple was built to the best it could be. I think you just figured out how we can help Pete. If Pete finds out what he cares about, he can use that to make the world a better place. But there are so many things to care about. Like Mike, he cares about humor. I do like a good joke, and I feel if there was more humor in the world, the world would be a better place. And Edison, you care about big ideas. People with bright minds solve problems. And Dot cares about the environment, and Alyssa cares about kindness, and Robert cares about exercise. Who's Robert? Oh, he's my neighbor. <laughs> and there's just so many things to care about. Well, what do you care about? I care about getting to know my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so which one should we tell Pete will make the world a better place? Ooh, are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? <gasps> that mashed potatoes should come in a variety of colors? Uh, no, no, that's not, yeah. no, just me? Okay, what were you thinking? I will try out all the things that you guys care about and rank them, and I'll be the judge. That way, we can tell Pete what to care about. <sighs> I better go find my rubber chicken. Yeah, uh, okay. Rubber chicken, rubber chicken, gotta find my rubber chicken. I think you loaned it to Edison. He said I didn't. What do you need a rubber chicken for? Well, we're gonna make the world a better place. If you wanna make the world a better place, you should help the environment. Just think of those sweet, helpless little sea turtles out there. Aw, I can see them with their cute little shells and... But I still think that humor is important, and I'm going to prove it to Tony. Why does Tony wanna make the world a better place? We're helping this kid named Pete. Then you should show him this verse video that Skip Vision just finished. Watch this. <laughs> I love school lunches. Our school has great lunches. Yeah, yeah, I mean, our school lunches are good, but as a lunch connoisseur, I, I wouldn't say great. Why not? Well, tell me, would you call this sandwich sloppy? I guess not. Me neither. I mean, this isn't a sloppy Joe sandwich. It's just a Joe sandwich at best. And these apple slices? We used to get five slices each, but now we only get four. What happened to the other slice? And don't even get me started on those milk cartons. Okay, what could possibly be wrong with a milk carton? Well, I'm just saying, would it be so bad to get a chocolate option every once in a while? Wow, you are really passionate about our school's lunches. Maybe you should work here. <laughs> <laughs> work at the school cafeteria. Is that even an option? Uh, yeah. And you seem to care about it with your whole heart, so why not? <laughs> Well, I mean, I care about school lunches a lot, but there's only one thing I care about with my whole heart. Oh yeah, what's that? Praising the Lord. Just like we find in the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse one. Say it with me like this. Psalm 103, one. Psalm 103, one. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. You see, I care about school lunches a lot, but I care about praising the Lord with my whole heart. Well, God's the one that created you, and He put those passions in your heart in the first place. So, because I care about the school lunches so much, I can use what I care about to praise and honor God. Mm-hmm. But are you really gonna work in the school cafeteria? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Somebody's gotta put some slot back in those Joes. Rodney, we have to get back to class. If we all use what we care about to praise God, maybe there isn't one specific cause we should all care about, since we're all different. What do you think? 
Mike? Found it! Now to go change the world! <laughs> okay, I think I've got a solid case for big ideas changing the world. Have you ever heard of a TED Talk? No, I haven't. It's an intelligent speech designed to make the world better. Well, I made one. A TED Talk. Even better. Look. <laughs> Welcome to my Ed Talk. Today, I'll be speaking on the importance of thinking. In this 34-part series, we will see that anything can be better with the power of ideas. Socrates says that, and what were those ships, you ask? The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. But jumping back three decades, we see, if it's the future, then where's my jetpack, you ask? No, instead ask, how is my jetpack? Why is my jetpack? Now, the thing about bald eagles. And yes, you guessed it, the Santa Maria. This concludes my Ed Talk. Thank you. Oh, it, oh it's over. Um, that's just part one. So, what do you think? Will it help Pete? Um, well, I definitely feel well rested. All right, so this is a work in progress, but I think it'll help Pete. Okay, let's see what you got. <clears throat> hey, everybody, welcome. It's great to be here. So, uh, what is the deal with chickens needing to cross the road? Where are they trying to get to? I mean, do, what, do you got a dentist appointment, or the dentist appointment? Like, what is, you are a chicken. So next time you're thinking about, hey, I'm a chicken and I need to cross the road, eh, just stay on your side. Oh, okay, tough crowd. <clears throat> Anyways, am I the only one that thinks that gravy and mashed potatoes should come in multiple colors? Hey, do you want some mashed potatoes and boring old white? Nah, I'm good. We have it in blue. Pour it directly into my mouth. Rubber chicken? Listen, it's it's funny, but it's not world changing funny. Hmm. About now. Hey Tony, I heard you want to make the world a better place. Well, we got this postcard from a kid named Pete, and he was wondering what to focus on in the world, and I can't figure out what to tell him to care about. Should I tell him to care about the environment? That's certainly one way to make the world a better place. Just think of those sweet little sea turtles out there. Oh, I can see them swimming with their, their little arms. And imagine a bunch of baby deer. Oh, look at them jump and play. Now visualize a field full of trash. Oh, oh no, no, no. That's, that's what I'm telling him. That's what I'm telling Pete to focus on. We're cleaning up that trash. He's focusing on the environment. <sighs> but that's what I care about. It's not the only thing that's important. What do you mean? The things I care about aren't more important than the things you care about. We each have passions in our heart that God put there. But we shouldn't just think about ourselves. Oh, so you're saying we shouldn't force Pete to take on something we care about to help the world. We need to remind him to use what you care about to give God glory. Exactly. Use what you care about to give God glory. If Pete wants to make the world better, he should recognize we were all made to glorify God. Whatever he cares about, whether it's ideas, humor, or the environment, it's a small part of God's big plan. So we shouldn't compete to see whose cares are the best. We should use what we care about to give God glory. That's good stuff. Happy to help. You know what? I'll get started on the connection transmission. And I'll find Mike. He said he had a revolutionary idea about mashed potatoes that he wanted to share with me. Oh. Hi, my name's Tony, and I'm from Connect HQ. We found an answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Psalms. Here, say it with me like this. Psalm 103, 1. Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. 
Use your whole heart, everything that matters to you most, to praise and honor God. Solomon cared about making the world a better place for people. He not only built a temple, but he used the finest materials and worked for years to make sure it was awesome. He built the best temple because it mattered to him. I can't tell you which one of your passions will make the world better. You have to discover that for yourself. But I can tell you God made you special and gave you a purpose that will help you glorify Him. So how can you make the world a better place? Find out what you care about. What has God put in you? Because He has a special job just for you. Use what you care about to give God glory. If you do that, you can make the world a better place. Thank you for your question, Pete. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you.